to Raising the Standard, where we promise you the Word of God that will build your faith and challenge you to the call of God in your life, sharing Jesus Christ and meeting the needs of His people in spirit, soul, and body. Well, it is always a wonderful privilege and opportunity for us to get to come share God's Word with you. Remember, one word from God, that's two, one word from God <laughs> will, will cause us to change our lives to be changed and for us to walk in the blessings of God. If we incorporate that word into our everyday walk and talk into our lives, in other words, we become a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. God wants us to know that he cares about every aspect of our lives and our being. But you know what? It's up to us to go ahead and incorporate what he told us to do in our everyday lives. And we can do that if we are diligently, he said he was a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Pastor, you, you, you always seem to put the responsibility on me and not on God. You know, well, I didn't put the responsibility on you. The word of God gives us our part of responsibility. See, God is, he's, he's done everything he's going to do. In other words, putting things into motion for us to walk in and to live in and to incorporate in our everyday being. But our part is the decisions that we make will determine the blessing that we walk in. I like that. I don't know if I said it like that before. The decisions that we make will determine the blessings that we walk in. So that will also determine the uh, inadequacies that we can walk in too. And in this day that we live in of COVID-19, of all the unrest that's going on in all the different arenas, the financial, the uh, social, the all these things that are happening, we need to have the consistency of God's word working in our lives. And my prayer is that you are and that you have and walking in God's best. And at Reaching the World Bible Church, we want you to know we love you. We appreciate you. We invite you to join us for our live stream services that, that occur on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. And uh, we're having a great time in these sessions. We are getting better each time we do it on these live streams. This is something that is just a part of uh, our lives now that we're going to be doing even when we re restart, whenever that will be of our in-person gatherings. But these live streams will be available unto you so you can tune in. Uh, our, our platforms, again, are the Reaching the World Bible Church Facebook page and the Reaching the World Bible Church YouTube channel. You can remember, we want you to like us, to follow us, and to share on the Facebook page. It is really important that you do that. And then on the YouTube channel, we want you to, again, subscribe, like, share, ring the bell, and, and it's a blessing. We also have the live stream service that we call the Midweek Dose of the Holy Ghost, or we call it Reaching You with the Word, and that's on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. And uh, having we're doing sessions about different aspects, all aspects of faith, that teaching us how we can walk in the, the, the equipped equipment of God's word in our lives and be doing. So these live stream services are a blessing. Also on Wednesdays, uh, again, we have a rebroadcast of this 11 a.m. service at 7 p.m. where Sister Ellen and I will make comments and, and uh, uh, say hi to you so you get a chance to talk to us and communicate with us on the rebroadcast at 7 p.m. on the Facebook page and the YouTube channel. So twice on Wednesdays. It's a blessing. Join us both times. You'll get more and more out of it. And again, a reminder you, our website, you can go to our website. If you had difficulty in getting to those platforms, you can go to Watch Live, and it'll take you directly to that page where you can either pick the Facebook page or the YouTube channel, and it'll take you directly to our, our, our pages and our channel, and you can go right into it and watch it. It's a blessing. While you're on the site, check out different things that go on all different messages that Sister Ellen and I have done uh, in the past are there. And you can also go to our online giving. You can go to the uh, there and then go to the Choose Fund and just 
safely and security by credit card or debit card and give. And you, once you go through that process once, it's easier after that because you put all your information in. And so that makes it uh, very simple. You can do that It'd be one time and it'll, it'll, it'll uh, it just do it that way. And that way you can <laughs> just go through it and, and bless the ministry. If it's blessing you, it's good for you to, to partner with us and those blessings that we receive, you receive because you, you, you give. Well, today we want to embark upon uh, a different aspect of teaching that, that we've done in times past, but we want to go, go back because, again, in the days that we're living in today, we need to know how to pray, and we need to know what what about uh, this? Uh, is is prayer a consistent thing? Is is God hearing me, or is He not hearing me? What should I do? What should I not do? Well, Pastor, what did you entitle it today? We entitled this particular uh, subject matter uh, or teaching steps to answered prayer. Steps that you can take to make sure that your prayers are answered. Steps to answered prayer. In other words, when you and I pray, we want to get results. We want to just not just have shotgun prayers. And you've heard me talking about that before, where you just pray a whole bunch of words and a whole bunch of things and hope and just shoot them out there and hope that something sticks somewhere. No, that's not efficient. That's not God. He has specific methods and principles that he wants us to go by in our communication with him. And you know what? That's what prayer is. Prayer is a communication with God to where it is. And I, and you heard me say this before, if you've been watching the broadcast for a while, prayer is not a monologue. Mono means one. And a lot of folks, when they pray, it is just a monologue. It's just them hearing themselves pray. Prayer is not that, or it shouldn't be that. Prayer is a dial Law. Dial means two. In other words, it's a communication between two uh, beings. And in, in our case of praying unto God, it's you that are praying and then God that's hearing and also responding. And then we can respond. So it should be a dialogue communication to where we get a chance to fellowship with him. You see, by faith, we reach out to claim what we need, and we thereby create the reality of what we need in our life. And we do that through the avenue or with the avenue of prayer. By faith, you ought to pray. When we pray, we ought to pray in faith. In other words, believing that we will receive what God would have us. Well, Pastor, you talked about steps to answer prayer. You sound like there's particular steps that the Bible gives us to accomplish this prayer life. Well, the Bible does gives us, give us steps. And step number one, and we've identified these, and we just this is the way we've classified it. There, there are other things that, that you can do as well that we've talked about in times past. But these are some good steps, according to the Word, that will help us to know that we get results when we pray. pray. Well, what is the first step, Pastor? Well, Step number one, Pastor Henry, amen, is decide what you want from God. What? You mean I got to say? Yes, decide what you want from God. That's important. It's important for you to make a decision of what you want for God, from God and be specific and be consistent. And knowing what you, well, Pastor, how can I know? Well, first of all, you need to find scripture that gives you uh, the avenue of knowing that it's yours and that you can have what the Bible says. And, but you got to decide. You have to make a decision yourself. And then once you decide and it's scriptural, according to God's word, you stick to it. Decisions are vitally important. Choices that you and I make will, will cause us to walk in blessing or not. And we made that statement before. Well, Pastor, give me some word. Give me some scripture. What does the Bible actually say? Well, one of the things that, that shows us about the consistency aspect of it comes from uh, the book of James. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, good place to start. Verse number 6. James 1, verse 6 says this. But let him, him, him or her, ask in faith. Essential for you to be in faith, trusting, believing God to receive. Nothing wavering. In other words, 
on point, not indecisive, nothing wavering when you ask. For he that wavereth or is wishy-washy is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. You know, when the wind blows, it'll push you where, where, whichever direction it's going. God says our prayer life should be, not like, should be not like that. Again, for he or she that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. The next verse in verse 7 says this, For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. What man? the man that wavereth. And when we say man, we're, that's a generic term that's inclusive of male and female, uh, a child of God, a man, a man of God, the hum, human, which is male or female. Again, for if we wavereth or if we're undecided, if we're not specific, if we're not consistent, he says that this in verse 8, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. In other words, if you've got two, three, four, five, six, six different thoughts, you're being pushed to and fro by, by what so-and-so said, and then somebody else said something opposite, and you think it might be this, or it could be this, you've got, uh, you're, you're not stable. You're, as the scripture says, double-minded. And that verse again says, a double-minded man is unstable, not just in his prayer life, but in all his ways. When you're double-minded, you don't have consistency. And that's going to lead you to problems because you're not going to be doing things the same way you need to do them every time you do them. And you know, consistency is so important for us to walk in in our prayer life, but also in our everyday Christian walk with God on our jobs. We need to be consistent in, in our uh, friendships. We ought to be consistent in our relationships, especially. We should be consistently uh, believing and, and wanting the very best for each other. You see, these scriptures show us the importance of decisiveness being decisive, being specific, being true to what God's word has, says to, has said to us and then carrying it out in our everyday walk. James said, if a man wavers, if he cannot make up his mind, he is unstable in all his ways. And he cannot then expect to receive anything from the Lord. You know, I don't want that said about me. I don't want that happening in my life and I don't want it happening in yours. And it doesn't have to if we apply the word of God to our life on a decisive, consistent basis and we become a doer of the word consistently, diligently seeking him, then instead of not receiving anything, we'll receive everything that God entitled us to, that he gave us. You know, one person said uh, he was praying just to be praying. Now, let me tell you something. It's good to pray, but if you're praying just to be praying, you're wasting your time. Oh, Brother Henry, no, something might stick. Well, you're correct. Something might stick, but how can you have confidence in that? If you can't have confidence in it, you can't have faith in it. So if you're not walking in faith, if you're not doing praying in faith or doing whatever you're doing in faith, God is not going to respond to you because, hey, to please God, we must be in faith. Faith, walking in faith, is how we please him, the scripture says. So if we're inconsistent, if we're unstable, if we're not decisive, we're not walking in faith, therefore, we're not pleasing God. I want to please God. And you know what? I believe you do too. You wouldn't be watching this program if you didn't want to find out more uh, or the better way or the best way that you can please God 
by doing the word. And God will help us to do that. But we have to be decisive. We have to know that God's word will work for us if we allow God to work the word in our lives. If you went to a grocery store and just push your cart up and down every aisle without buying anything, people would think something was wrong with you. <laughs> and you know what? Something probably would be wrong with you if you just did that and you didn't buy anything. You just went and pushed your, pushed your uh, buggy around aisle. That's right. Maybe did it for an hour and then pushed the buggy in there. So folks start watching and one, and then you left and they said, uh, something strange about that character. And yeah, why? In decision, indecisiveness, um, you, you wouldn't have gotten anything that you needed. You wouldn't even have achieved or gotten anything that you desired because you just were not decisive about going ahead, picking up what you need, putting it in your uh, grocery cart, and then going to pay for it and taking it home and using it. And then it will be effective for you. But if you don't do that, then you won't have anything to take with you to be a blessing to your home. God wants us to decide what we want from him and then be definite about it. That's step number one. Decide what you want. Pastor, you spend a lot of time on step number one because it's essential. It's important. But that's not the only step. It's, it's, this is vitally important, step number one. But it'll lead, that leads us to step number two. Well, what is that, Brother Henry? Step number two. Read Scripture that promise the answer you need. Read the Word of God, Scriptures, that promise you the answer you need. And to, for you to read those, you got to find them. you got to search the Word. you got to get in it and study to show yourself approved that you may rightly divide the Word of Truth. you got to find those Scriptures that promise you those things that you can do so that you can receive the blessings of God. God's Word is God's will for us. God's Word is illustrations and demonstrations from uh, different people in times past, uh, even our Lord Jesus, Jesus that gave us examples of what to do. And then some folks, the Bible gives us examples of what not to do. But one of the essential things for our prayer life is to read scriptures that promise the answer that you need, that I need. Well, Brother Henry, where do we, well, we can go back to the Old Testament. It starts there in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua 1, verse 8 says this, This book of the law, talking about the Bible, shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate, meditate, get into it, mutter it over and over again, read it, study, as I said, to show yourself fruit. But, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night consistently, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Pastor, do you really need to do all of the Word of God? Can't you just do a little bit of it and, and, and just be fine? Well, you can exist by doing a little bit, of it, but, but to be a doer of the Word, you, you, gotta, you, got, you, you need to do all that He told us to do. He said to do all that is written therein. And then the last part of that verse says this, for then, after you've done that, and this is old covenant, I know, but it works in the new covenant too. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. When I am a doer of the word, I'm going to have good success. In order to be successful in our prayer life in particular, God's word must be first place. It should be foremost. And as we feed on his word, as we study the word, as we become more than just a hearer of the word. Now, it's essential for us to hear the truth, but it's just as essential or more essential for us to not only hear it, but then do the truth. Be a doer of the word 
in times of need, we will be prepared then. If you've already fed on God's word and studied it and based your lifestyle talk and walk on the, the word of God, you set up preparation time for anything that might happen. Well, pastor, this COVID-19 and the things that we're going to, we were not aware that this was going to happen, that it was going to be like this. Well, you're right. We were not aware, but our heavenly father was, and he had prepared a lot of us a lot better than some who had not prepared by studying the word, by consistently this being decisive and doing the word, we had already decided what we were going to do. Now we had to make some adjustments. We all did, but, but God showed us how to do that because we had already had a good foundation of truth to stand on. God's word will work for us. You know, Satan tempted Jesus out in the wilderness to turn stones into bread. You remember when he was fasting in, in the garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane and, and Satan said, why don't you just turn that in, 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 into bread? And Jesus said something to him. What? He said the word. Jesus was the word made f flesh. But Jesus said, it. he said, it is written. In other words, Jesus himself went back to what was written. He said, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Satan took him up on that high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And he told Jesus that if he worshiped him, he would give him those kingdoms to him. And you may say, well, that was no temptation for Jesus. Well, in actuality, Satan did have the authority that Adam, the first Adam, had sold out and gave him the godship in the sense of this world system. And so he did have the authority in the world and he could have turned that over. So Jesus was aware and he knew that. So it was the possibility or a temptation in a sense. But what did Jesus do again? Jesus answered him the same way he did the first time he tried to tempt him. He says, it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thy serve. Satan took Jesus to those places again and again. Jesus told him it was written. He told Jesus to cast himself off of there and those angels, uh, you know, that he, he, that if he did that, Jesus said again, answered with the word and Luke four. And that's what I've been going over Luke four, three through 12. Let's just look at it a little bit. He said, and the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. When you and I have the word of God, that's what we should live by. But the devil didn't stop and he won't stop with you. And the devil taking him up into that high mountain, as we described already, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Verse six said, if that, and the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of him for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. He said, I got authority to do it. And he did. He said, if thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. But notice what Jesus did. Verse eight and what I said, and Jesus answered and said unto him, get thee behind me. Say, you know what? That's an example for you and I. We need to tell the devil to get behind us for it is written, knowing what the word says, finding scriptures to give you the promise. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thou serve. Verse nine continues on. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on that pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down from hence. Verse 10 says, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. Satan tried to use the word on Jesus. <laughs> he knew a little bit of the word too. He tried to trick him. But hey, Jesus was not ignorant of his devices. 
and Satan can say, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, least at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Satan used the word, but he was twisting it. Then verse 12, and Jesus answered and said unto him, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Satan, you know better. He knew better, but he was trying to trick him. He was trying to, Jesus used that same weapon that you, that he's made available for you and I to use. We can use the word of God it, and say, it is written. If the scripture are firmly implanted in our hearts, we are prepared for any attack of the devil. And the devil is going to attack. In the matter of guidance, search the scripture. God and see what God has to say about whatever that situation is. His word plainly shows us his will. If the scripture don't promise us what we may be seeking, we don't have any business praying for it. What'd you say? If the scripture doesn't promise you what you're seeking, don't pray for it. We should not want anything that the word of God says we shouldn't have. Well, pastor, some things are good. Some things feel good. Some things seem to be good. Some things do, but we're not, shouldn't be moved by our feelings only. We should be moved by the word of God. And, and this time we're going to cut off right here. Romans 10, 17 says this. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith will come when you hear the truth. And when you hear God's word, that is the truth. And when you hear the word, the truth, then you're going to walk in the blessings of it. At Region World Bible Church, we want you to hear the truth over and over again. We invite you to those live stream services again on Sunday mornings, 10 a.m., Facebook page and YouTube channel. And today at 11 a.m., you can join us for that live stream, reaching you with the word on Facebook, YouTube channel. The word will go out and and it will never return void. In other words, something will happen. Something's occur. When you hear the word and you become a doer of the word, you'll walk in the blessings of God's word. Join us for these live streams. Remember that rebroadcast at 11 a.m. service will occur at 7 p.m. on tonight, Wednesday nights, where Sister Ellen and I will comment about what, what, what uh, we talked about. Say hi to you because we love you. We say hello to our Reaching World Bible Church family and friends. Continue to join us on these, these uh, broadcasts. My prayer is and our prayer is that you're being blessed every time. And remember, feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. We see our time slipped away from us. We'll see you next time. God bless you.